So I just bought the brand new Weber slate rust resistant griddle. And I got this a few days ago. I've cooked on it a couple times and I've been wanting a griddle for a long time and I finally got one. Go ahead and get this put in place here. So I've been researching griddles all winter long and I had my mind made up. I've watched tons of reviews, tons of videos. I knew for sure I was gonna end up buying the Traeger griddle. I thought that was the one I really wanted. And then Weber ended up coming out with this brand new model. It just went on sale like two weeks ago. So it's like brand new. They ended up fixing the three things that I didn't like about their previous griddle. So the first one was the lid. The lid, you had to lift off and hang it on the back. It wasn't a hinged lid. So this, this one now has a hinged lid. It opens and closes real easy. The second problem was the griddle had a wind problem. It was actually raised up like an inch higher than the rest of the griddle. Wind could get under there, affect the burners. They've lowered the griddle on this one. So now the bottom of the griddle is the exact same height as the, the edge of the base. So they fixed, hopefully fixed the wind problem. We do get a lot of wind out here. And then the other problem was they just didn't have very big side tables, at least in my opinion. And they have made the side tables way bigger I think that that's kind of important on a griddle because you've got so many tools, so many ingredients, you need table space. So they fixed the big three for me. So I ended up buying this one to try it out. And um, it was also like a couple hundred bucks cheaper than the Traeger. So I thought I'd go through the features real quick on this griddle and the operation of it. And then we'll go ahead, we'll get something cooked up. So this does take up a lot of space. It is six feet long. And then you're gonna need about 10 inches between it and the wall for the lid to open up because it does kind of swing out there somewhat wide. So you are gonna need plenty of space for this. So I ended up buying the 30 inch griddle and they claim that this is more rust resistant than other ones. It has to do with the composite steel or the way the steel is made. It's like heat treated. It may be higher carbon steel. I'm not really for sure, but it's supposed to be less prone to rust than other brands. And that is supposed to be in the steel. It's not a coating or anything that you can scratch off. It's just how the steel is made. Now there's a couple hand holes here that you can reach under here and you can lift this off to get to the burners. Somehow I got a piece of popcorn in there from the other night. So you can see it's a three burner griddle and I bought the upgraded version. This is a temperature readout right here. And right here is the temperature sensor. It's spring loaded, the griddle sits on top of it and then it'll give you the temperature reading of that exact spot. So each burner has its own igniter. It's one of those click igniters. So you just click it and it lights up. And when you light it, you gotta make sure you're pushing in on the knob and it puts out that extra jet of flame to help it light. And to put the griddle in, there's like four holes for it to, to pop down inside of. There we go. So when you light up your griddle, you've got just enough space in between to be able to see down inside there and you can see the blue flame. So just enough to see it. All right, we're warming up the griddle. We'll go ahead and get our temperature readout turned back on. So the side table on the right side, the actual table comes out of it and then they make accessories to be able to fit down inside of here. So they've got like a cutting board that can go on here or a tray. They've got like a caddy to hold all your oils and seasonings that will fit down inside of here. They've got different accessories that'll go in that location. And they also have accessories that clip on the ends of the side table. So these are just little clips. Um, they're like basically little hanging hooks. So you snap them on here and then you can hang your tongs or your spatulas from those. And they also have baskets that hang off to the side, cup holders, paper towel holders, things like that to be able to clip on either end of the griddle. So the left-hand side table, you can only clip the accessories on the side. The center doesn't come out, but it does lift up and fold down so that you can store it in a smaller space. And the right side table does not fold down. It is always kind of in that fixed position. So I heated the griddle up and then I turned it back down to low. And let me show you this. So on low, the temperature has come down and it's down to 311 degrees. And that is a low temperature for a griddle. Most of them run like 400 degrees as a minimum, maybe 450. They seem to run really hot. And this one's, 
It's come up a little bit. It's like 320 degrees right now, but that is a definitely a low temperature for a griddle. We'll go ahead. We're going to turn this up to medium and we'll see what kind of temperature we're reading out on it. So I've had it at medium for maybe 10 minutes now and it is hovering around the 430, 435 degrees. And keep in mind that temperature reading is actually in between the burners, so it's probably actually a little hotter over the burner. We'll go ahead and turn it up all the way. We'll see how hot it gets. On high, it's been running between 530 and 560. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool back down. I'm gonna go get all the stuff that I need to make breakfast burritos. All right, I think I got all my ingredients. These are frozen bell peppers from our garden last year. We've got a half an onion chopped up in the bottom. We've got some Colby Jack cheese. I've got five eggs from our chickens. We've got some taco shells, so it's gonna be smaller burritos. And then we've got some pork sausage from our pigs that we grew. And to top it off with some picante sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch off about half a pound of sausage. Oh yeah, you can smell the peppers. Amazing smell. Well, I wish I would have brought some butter, but I forgot to bring any out. Hopefully the oil that's on there is good enough to not stick. Go ahead and start incorporating them together. Got the griddle off. I'm just warming up a tortilla on there just to make it flexible. Looks good to me. A little bit of cheese. A little bit of picante sauce. go. Well, I definitely made this quicker than if I would have tried to do this inside on a skillet because I've got such a bigger cooking area to be able to cook the eggs and everything. This was definitely an improvement from inside. Mm. It's pretty good. I wish I had some chili peppers uh, to be able to put it instead of the bell peppers, but it still turns out pretty good. So typically we meal prep around here, so we try to make up a few meals for us to be able to take to work or eat through the week. And I'm basically gonna take these breakfast burritos, we're gonna get these all rolled up, and then that'll be my breakfast for the next few days. How many tortillas do you think this will make? I bet it'll make a few. It's easy to overfill these. And I think that's what I just did. Grease trap is up here on this front corner up here. So the grease trap, it's under the left hand side. I'd say it's probably three inches deep and probably about 10 inches wide. Um, decent sized pan to be able to hold the grease and water and all the trash from the griddle. And of course you got these removable pans that you can replace, but 
decent size, easy to pull out from the front and get to. And it does have a storage cabinet underneath the front. You can store plenty of stuff in here. I've got a box of these white rags and I've tried a few different things so far. This has worked the best for me for when you wipe oil on the grill and not leave a bunch of paper towels or lint on there. These have worked good. They're my go-to at the moment. Haven't found anything better. But yeah, plenty of space in here. And then you got the shelf as well. So, yep, liking it. So I ended up buying this from Home Depot. It was free shipping. It took like a week and a half for it to show up at the house. I think Ace Hardware sells it as well. There's like four, four or five different models of these, depending on what the griddle size is and the features that you buy. They even have ones that have a table that flips out forward and you have like a work surface here at the side. So it depends on, you know, which model you end up buying. But this one here took me an hour to put together. I'd say at least a good hour to put together. And you do need two people to assemble it because the, the burner assembly and the hinged lid here, that all comes put together. So you need two people to be able to lift this up and then set it down inside of the cabinet. So something to keep in mind if you want to buy one, you will need two people to completely get it assembled. Now the things I don't like about this, the number one thing I don't like is this side table, this little stainless steel top. It, it's thin, it rocks. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit flexible. Maybe you can see that. Um, so it just doesn't seem like a very sturdy side table. I wish they would have just included like the cutting board or like a solid tray that you could like take inside and wash when you're done. But I know this looks nice and sleek with the stainless steel, but I think I would have preferred having like a cutting board or a tray, or a tray just like included. And then the other issue with it is this is extremely heavy. So if you do need to move it like up onto a deck, um, there's not a good way to lift it. So on this side, you can grab this fixed table and you can lift it up. And believe me, this is very heavy. Now the other side, this is a fold down shelf, so you can't really use it. As soon as you lift up on it, it comes unlatched and wants to fold down. So there's really not a good way to be able to you know, grab a hold of this thing and lift it up onto like a deck if you, if you do need to lift it. So other than that, I don't think I have anything else to really complain or any dislikes about the griddle. I haven't really used it, I guess, long enough to be able to give it like a full review or anything. This is kind of like just the initial thoughts of the product, you know, in the first week of using it. But the real reason of this video was to kind of do a quick overview of the Weber Slate. Anytime you're spending this much money, I know I definitely research it, so I figure some other people are probably looking for some answers or at least some information on this. I spent $700 on this. I think it was about $750 by the time you pay tax. So that's a big chunk of change. It's a, you know, that's an investment when you're buying something that's that much. So hopefully this helps anybody who's, who's looking at maybe purchasing one of these, at least give them some information to be able to make the decision on what griddle is right for them. But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next video.